1923, when the concept of amalgam was merely an ill-conceived idea that the milkman once had whilst contemplating his morning bran flakes, and I was a mere teenager, scooters were very minimal. Once the Malcolm ran into puberty in the 80s and 90s, scooters were still only favoured by older ladies and seemed to be severely lacking in the choice department. Fast forward to today and scooters are not only the rage, but favoured amongst many ladies and gentlemen over their geared opponents, especially considering their practicality and their much improved cooler looks these days. Well, MotoGB, the UK importer for such brands as Royal Alloy, Royal Enfield, Sim, Kiwi, Benelli, Lambretta, Hanway, uh, FB Mondial and Italjet have decided they want to get in on the market as well with their own brand, MGB, for MotoGB. I know it's not excitingly inventive, but it works. They do 50cc scooters, 125 scooters and a 125 adventure bike and that will be coming up in future episodes. But today we're looking at the 125 range and coming up now is a list of what they do in that range. It's 50 and 125. <laughs> So we have the A9, the R8, not to be mistaken for the Audi, the Trieste, and this, the Fantasy, also available as a 50. So today I thought I would take a look at one of their 125s, the Fantasy, and see how it compares to its rivals, such as the Motorino Misano and the Nico GPX, also available as a 50 and a 125. Let's crack on. Well, the Fantasy uses an air-cooled four-stroke single-cylinder fuel injection engine, which is Euro 5 compliant, and MotoGB states it develops eight brake horsepower and a few torques. With right way up forks on the front, you get twin shocks on the rear. 220 mm front disc with a double piston caliper and 190 mm rear disc also with a double piston caliper and using the combined braking system. Using a 120 Kenda tyre front and rear it comes with 12 inch wheels front and back. Dimensions are all pretty typical, 1.8 meters long, 720 millimeters wide, although it is 870 when the mirrors are on, so just be mindful of that if you're getting it down an alleyway. 1.1 meters tall, and it weighs in at just 115 kilos, pretty typical really. Seat height, 780 millimeters, so it's all pretty average. But it is comfortable. So I think at this stage, we should take it out on the road and see what it rides like. And here we go. So, initial thoughts. Well, bearing in mind it's a brand new scooter, that actually pulls away fine. As a scooter should. Oh, brakes are pretty sharp. Pretty spot on there. Takes the corner very easily. Indicator easy to use. Up to speed, look, straight away. There's no dramas there. Mirrors are good. I've got good visibility out of the mirrors. I can see probably 85% of the road behind me, which is good. Yeah, very pleased with the mirrors. Seat's very comfortable. Position is very easy. It feels very stable. Moves around very simply. Very easy to flick around. No problems there at all. Very comfortable. I was expecting the suspension to be a lot harder than that, but it's not. It's very forgiving, nice and soft, simple to ride. As I say, I can't thrash this, I can't do too much speeds on this because it is a brand new scooter and it hasn't been run in yet. 
brakes very nicely pulls up very nicely no jolts no judders very nice indeed so now is a little test as to how it performs when I pull away from the traffic lights I don't expect a rocket ship but I expect no hesitation okay no real delay there it's gentle it's not a rocket ship but we are now doing 40 absolutely fine yeah got no qualms with that so it handles well it's soft and forgiving comfortable good visibility and it rides like a scooter should ride nothing nasty nothing feels bad Okay, I have two small complaints. It rides really nicely. The only thing is don't take the corners too sharply because you will catch the side stand. And the other thing is the side repeaters, not the side repeaters, the indicator lights on the dash are very, very small. So when you're indicating, make sure you look and turn it off. Or just push the button and then just give it a quick check. Other than that, I've got nothing to complain about at all. The bike is available in three different colours. You've either got this silver with red, you've got white with red, or you've got red, white and blue. Now, it only has a five and a half litre fuel tank, but that's just average for every other scooter. So you're just filling up exactly the same as you are with any other scooter. It just doesn't sound a lot when you compare it to a motorbike. But anyway, that's what scooters do. And as scooters go, I think it rides really nicely. Now, in comparison to the other two, I think this has the much better looks. It feels more substantial and it feels better on the ride. The suspension feels nicer at the front and at the back. And I like the way the dials are set out as well. Um, Price-wise, on the road, these are priced at £1,999. Now that is £150 more than the Motorini Masano, but £100 less than the Nico GPX. What this does have over that is you've got a nice handy USB on the front and you've got these two little cubby holes down here. So I think this is a very good buy and I'm really pleased with the way it looks, the way it feels, it rides really well. I think it's a bit quicker than the other two it feels quite punchy at the low ends for a 125 scooter but as a budget scooter I think it serves its purpose really well indeed but where it excels above the other two as far as looks and practicality and usage is concerned there are a couple of things I don't like about it one of them being that red brake disc now they must have actually paid someone to paint the edge of the brake disc red. And a red that doesn't match the red on the body. So why? It's just not necessary. You just need a silver caliper and a regular disc without all the color on it. It's not necessary. And the other thing I don't like are the indicators at the front. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, despite the fact that when you start it, You've got one light on this side and then main beam switches to the other side and that I don't like and it looks a bit cheap and pathetic. Uh, the indicators in the sun, they are very low down and not very visible. Now the sun has just gone in and I'll show you again in a second when the sun comes out from behind that cloud that you just cannot see them from the front. Or for that matter, from the side. So the sun is now out, so we've got right indicator is on, off, on, 
off. Now I would say they're practically invisible. Not good design there. Okay, there is one other thing I don't like. Now they've got a sticker on there that says E5, and then one underneath that says unleaded gas only. We'll gloss over the gas bit. But please use unleaded gasoline of 90 octane or above. Now in the UK, unleaded and super unleaded are both above 90 anyway. So to cover yourself, I personally would just put super unleaded in and not the new E10 fuel. Okay, now you could argue that uh, the headlight arrangement one side to the other is just down to me not liking things that aren't symmetrical. But other than that, the only thing I don't really like, as I say, is that disc where they've painted the edge of the disc and those indicators. Other than that, I think it's a pretty damn good bike and a nice buy. And for a Euro 5 bike that's this large, practical, comfortable and easy and good to ride, I think it's a pretty good bargain. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back next time with something else. Who knows? Find out then. Um, please like, subscribe and uh, click share on this video and um, all the other stuff. If you want to support this channel, please do so by clicking the Patreon link or our Facebook merchandise shop link in the description below. And until then, they're going home. So I'm going to finish too. Thank you. So until next time, please ride and drive carefully, but have fun. Bye-bye. Yeah, all right, give up.